All right, for you five or six guys that have been asking over and over for me to review that 5,400 euro electronic key reprogramming computer, it's not going to happen. Sorry, guys, can't afford it. But for those of you who've been looking through the Vent catalog and a lot of other items, Today we will do a bunch of them. I'm going to review everything you see here. The first one we'll take a look at will be their extractor kit. The second will be the three sets of stainless steel jiggler keys. And the final product will be the Tomahawk 2 bump hammer. So let's take a look at these one by one and see how well they work. All right, guys, I'm starting to think that one of the symptoms of this coronavirus thing is broken off keys because I've gotten more requests on how to get stuff out of keyways in the last week than I have in like the last year. Um, here's how it usually happens. Someone will put their key in there and as they start to pull it out, they'll lean on it or something. It'll break and usually it's at one of the low cuts. And then before they engage their brain, they'll stick it back in there you know, like it's miraculously going to reattach. I don't know why they do it. Uh, but regardless of whether they get that door open or not, you're stuck with a piece of broken key fairly deep into the keyway. In order to get that out, you're going to need something like this. This is a vent uh, four-piece extractor set. Now, again, I get a lot of questions about which of these to use. These things, and I'll try to get that camera to focus, these are super, super sharp, almost like the barbs on a hook, needle sharp. So be very aware of that when you try to handle these. Um, you have doubles, and there's a double that kind of leans backwards right there, and there's a double that leans forward, and then you got the same thing but in singles. And the question I get is, which one of those do I use? And it's like everything else in lock picking. There's no answer that applies all the time. And the way I do it is I usually try the double, and if I can't fit the double in there for some reason, then I'll go back on the single. And my logic is that with a double, I got you know, I got two sharp barbs that might snag the key, and with a single, I've only got one. So basically, double my chances. So no correct answer, just whichever of these will fit best, and whichever one works, that's the right one. All right, so look, we're going to try to get this out of here. What I would caution you, because these are so incredibly sharp, don't just grab it and try to yank. Eh, because if there's oil on your fingers or sweat or something, or if you just aren't gripping tightly enough, check out this case. I mean, it's super tight. And even when you shake it, these guys are not coming out. Uh, so very tight fit. So if you try to drag it against that resistance and your finger slips like that, it's going to leave a gash on your finger. So the way I would suggest is grab the one that you want. So grab in the middle of the shaft and then squeeze this kind of thing and just kind of squeeze it like that. And that allows you to pull all these guys out of it a lot easier without not really risking your fingertips, the most painful place to get a cut. All right, they are all stainless steel, as I said. They are laminated handles, and they're Lockmaster branded. This is a EU organization. Let's see if this one will work. I usually go with double, but let's, since I pulled this one out, let's give it a try. All right, so there's our broken key. How do I attack these? If I take the single, like this one, and this is a fairly wide keyway, this is a Schlage keyway, I might try to fit him along the bottom first. Again, I'm a little patient, so I'm trying to do this with a camera. So if he fits in the bottom of the keyway, and he does, and I'll see if I can get this to focus for us, I'll try to slide him up underneath the key. Don't push too hard because I think you just saw me push him a little deeper. So that's more work I got to do. But try to slide him underneath the key and wiggle him back and forth, trying to squeeze him up under there. On this one, probably not going to work. It's a pretty good fit. But I'm going to slide it off to the side. If you can get him up in there, underneath him, then turn that barb sideways, just like that. And that way you dig that sharp barb into that key, and then you can kind of drag him back out of the keyway. If that doesn't work, my next choice will be to try to take that, put it along the side of the keyway. Let me get him right oriented correctly. And so I'm going to do it on this side first, but... Um, I was trying to slide him in there, and again, I'll turn the barb towards the key and try to drag him out. Try both sides. So that side doesn't work. Let's try the bottom on that, that side. And again, I'm kind of wiggling it back and forth to move the key over. Don't push too hard. I mean, you can't push it too far. There's an actuator there, but no sense in shoving him all the way to the back if you don't have to. He's not going to go there. And then I'll move him up around the warding, and I'll try the top. And he's not going to go there either. Now, the reason I'm trying those first is because those are the less stressful things to put onto this very thin shaft. But at some point, if those don't work, you're going to have to stress that shaft. And the way I do that is I slide it in the top of the keyway until I hit the key. Again, I'm trying to do this through the camera lens. I'll shove them in there until I push up against the key, and then I'll take the shaft 
push against spring resistance again and push those pins up out of the way. Notice how I'm flexing that thin shaft. I am stressing it. And then I'll try to force him up along the top of the key until, and I think you can see that, he went over the top of that first peak. Now that may or may not work. It, that may mean he's too tall to extract out, but let's try it. So I'll start to pull him, and if it doesn't work, I'll try to jiggle this up and down, trying to lower the profile of everything to drag him out of there. And he started to move there, and there we go. Once I got him past that one uh, key, uh, pin, now he seems to want to extract. And there he comes right on out. That's how easy these things are to use. So if nothing else will work to get a piece of broken key. You can't use a pair of needles, pliers, anything like that. So there you go. This is the, as I said, the, the extractor kit. These sell for 33.52 euros, and that's about $38 US. All right, guys, next up are the three different sets of stainless steel jiggler keys. Now, a lot of you are familiar with these. These are widely sold on the Internet. They call them car jiggler keys, and these are absolutely great for getting into cars. In fact, I had a Ford Explorer. This got it in, got me into the door just as fast, if not faster, than the key that came with the uh, with the vehicle. Anyway, very quick to get in. There's 10 different ones. Some of these, I think a couple of them have double profiles. The, the uh, templates for these are widely available. Available on the internet. So a lot of you guys, if I don't say that, you guys are going to bring it up. But, you know, given that these only sell for $23 and they're made from stainless steel, I it would take me at least a whole day to make a decent set of these and they wouldn't be nearly as nice as this. So 23 bucks versus all day in front of the grinder, that's kind of, for me at least, that's a no-brainer. Um, those are full scale. The half scale are these guys. They call these the mini. By the way, those sell for $23. What they did on the minis is they took the six most successful profiles out of that original car jiggler set, and that's what you see here. Uh, fewer keys, the price is a little lower. These are eight. I'm sorry, twenty-one dollars for the set of six. These are great for medium-sized padlocks, things like that. If you have locks smaller than that, though, uh, these are the newest. I mean, these are not real new. I get it, but been around a few years. It's exactly the same as the Mini, but they call these, get this spread out like a deck of cards. They call these the Micro. And I think, I didn't measure it, but these appear to be about one quarter scale of the car jigglers. So really, really small. Small enough for things like luggage locks. This is a fingerprint TSA lock for, set up for my fingerprint, obviously. But like that dude back up. But more importantly, the TSA bypass key right here, tiny little thing. And this one is I'm trying to read it through the camera. It looks like a TSA profile number seven. So I'm a, a lot of you guys have questions about how to use the jiggler keys. They're called jiggler for a reason, not tryout keys. And let's just grab one at random. This one's got double side, so let's just try that side up first. Tryout keys, you generally will stick them in, and usually those are made for lever locks. You just slide it in. I'm trying to do this through the camera. Sorry about that. Anyway, you just slide it in, and you turn it, and you see if it works. In this case, it doesn't work. These are not really tryout keys. They, they are called jiggler keys. And so the way that these are supposed to be used, you slide them in, again, through the camera, Bill. You turn them, and I like to hold the ring. And look at that. That was not part of the plan, but let's try that again. They normally don't work like that, but these are very simple locks. So you would slide it in, you would turn it, and then you would jiggle it up and down until you get an open. This apparently is close enough for a tryout key. Let's try something a little different, though. Let's try a master number three, our favorite training lock. Again, I'm going to use these micros because they seem to fit. Now, there's also a rake, and I like to use him as a last resort, but let's try this guy first. It's the same cut on both sides. It's the miniature of what works on my Ford. It worked on my old Ford Explorer. Uh, generally, I slide him in. I begin to turn by holding that key, or at least holding the ring, and then I just jiggle up and down a little bit, and sometimes I slide it in and out at the same time. And if that doesn't work, and this one doesn't appear like it's going to because the bidding is probably more widely varied than that. So let's try something a little different. Let's try, let's try this guy. Now he's got different on both sides, so we'll try it with that side up first. So slide him in, do some raking around, in and out. Now these are pretty simple locks, I'll admit that. And it's probably much faster, but for demo purposes, this ought to work. almost the same as raking the darn thing. If that didn't work, let's flip that key over and try the other side. 
again in there, do some jiggling. And the one time a master lock doesn't want to cooperate for a demo. <laughs> and there we go, it does work. It's got to be a little more forceful. These are probably much, much faster to rake, but I wanted to show you how to do the jiggling technique. Works on a lot of locks, probably won't work so well on high security locks or locks with a lot of security pins, but for simple locks, and particularly for smaller like TSA locks, luggage locks, uh, filing cabinet locks, desk locks, things like that. These are absolutely fantastic for jiggling your way in very, very quickly. This micro kit also sells for $21. All right, guys, last we're going to talk about the Tomahawk 2 Bump Hammer. These sell for 22 euros. That's about $25 US. It's a solid plastic handle that's pinned. There's no weight adjustment. What you see is what you get. It's got a nice flexy handle on it and a little curve to kind of keep it from slipping out of your hand. It fits your hand pretty nicely. The nice thing about this is when you swing it once, it kind of bounces several times. Now, in using a bump key, a lot of guys use like the handle of a screwdriver or a wooden dowel, you know, other tool. Maybe a, I even saw got one guy that used a D-cell battery for some reason. So what they did is they'd pop it out one click and then they'd hit it with their whatever they're using, battery, for example. And then after they're done, they got to put the de device down, recock it one pin and then keep going. I like to use what's called the machine gun attack. And in order to do that, you got to file a little bit off the bow to make room for one of these rubber, these are actually castration rings for farm animals. And what will happen is when you hit it or push it in, that rubber ring will then push it back out that one click that you need. So it's constantly bouncing back and forth. The faster you can hit it, the faster it will work. And this Tomahawk 2 makes that fast part especially easy because with one swing, it gives you like three hits. So what I like to do is I, again, keep my fingers out of the way, turn it very slightly just a little bit of tension, and then set up this tomahawk and give it a couple of swings. And that's how quick it works. I took like two swings with that, and the, the hammer, that, that bouncing just did all the rest. So really convenient, very fast attack to get in. Again, these are pretty easy, very easy to pick, but they are great for demos to show you how quickly the tomahawk 2 can work. All right, guys, there you go. This will be the giveaway this week. You get the Tomahawk 2, the three sets of stainless steel jiggler keys, and the four-piece extractor kit, all from Vent. I got a couple other things I'm going to throw in. I really don't need a review. I just I bought these because I wanted to know, you know, I thought they were pretty cool, quite honestly. And that would be a universal locksmith belt buckle. So that will go along with it. I think these sell for... I think they're around $23, 20 euros, about 23 bucks. So I'll throw that in. And they also have these cool silver locksmith lapel pins, I guess they would be. So these sell for like five bucks, $4.82 or four euros. So there you go. All that will be this week. It's a giveaway. You want to know how to register for free? Stick around. I'll tell you how to do it. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway purple band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.